You're watching NBC4 New York, the Tri-State News Channel. And now, Linda Beccaro, Rob Morrison, John Marshall, and Bruce Beck. This is News Channel 4 at 11. Live from New York, NBC celebrates 75 years on the air. But first, the Middle East. The siege in Bethlehem, one of the holiest cities on Earth, may be over within hours. Good evening. Round-the-clock talks may be the charm that brings some peace back to the Church of the Nativity. Tonight, the Israeli Prime Minister is in Washington with what he calls a serious plan for peace. Back in the Middle East, it could be the beginning of the end of a bitter standoff. Right now, Kendra Farn is live in our new newsroom with the very latest. Kendra? Rob, Ariel Sharon is expected on Tuesday to outline his vision for a long-term interim peace deal with the Palestinians. It would be hammered out at a regional conference attended by both sides, as well as the United States and moderate Arab states. One step in the right direction, as you said, on this Orthodox Easter, what appears to be a near agreement to end the standoff in Bethlehem. Palestinian officials have said that a deal has been struck to end the month-long standoff at the Church of the Nativity, that of more than 100 people still inside, at least six most wanted militants would be deported to Italy, 30 others would be escorted to the Gaza Strip, and the rest would be freed. It was all worked out, they claim, by the Vatican and the European Union. Not so, say the Israelis. While it may be just days or even hours away, there's no agreement, not yet. Prime Minister Sharon, meantime, is now in the U.S. preparing for his fifth meeting with President Bush. Sharon comes armed with a 91-page book of documents that Israel claims proves Yasser Arafat is a terrorist, including copies of requests for funds for Palestinian militants signed and approved by Arafat. Palestinian officials say the documents are forgeries. We are going to look at whatever it is that Prime Minister Sharon would like to show us. Uh, let me just say, the United States has long been concerned about the potential ties between terrorists and the Palestinian Authority. In meeting with Bush, Sharon may not like what he hears concerning the settlements being built in Palestinian territories. Secretary of State Colin Powell says Washington will urge Ariel Sharon to curb settlements in the West Bank and Gaza, one of the issues keeping peace talks on hold. We have been there for Israel and with Israel since the day it was founded, and we will always be there for Israel. But we think being for Israel also puts an obligation on us to work with the other side, with the Palestinian side, to find a way forward so that we're not just in a, in a constant uh, period of conflict. Raids on Palestinian cities and towns continue, and so does the killing. Israeli military officials admitted soldiers mistakenly shot and killed a Palestinian woman and her two small children in a vineyard in the northern West Bank after an explosive went off under their tank. Israeli officials traveling with Sharon say they need to keep talking, but with another Palestinian leadership. Though anticipating this week's Israeli opposition to Yasser Arafat, President Bush's foreign policy adviser said today that the U.S. is committed to a Palestinian state with Arafat as its likely leader. The U.S. will not, they say, choose leadership. Live in the newsroom, Kendra Farr, News Channel 4. Linda, back to you. Thank you, Kendra. And given the violence in the Middle East, security was especially tight for today's Salute to Israel parade on Fifth Avenue. More now from News Channel 4's Tony Aiello. Manhattan's Norman McGeed let loose on the shofar, signaling the start of the Salute to Israel parade, an annual event that resonated with extra meaning for many in this troubled time. Because of 9-11 and what's happening in Israel, it's very important to show our support for Israel. Jewish war veterans, we did a great job and we're going to keep fighting till we can do everything to help Israel. The parade, as always, a popular stop for those holding and seeking office. Given what's gone on in the Middle East, it is terribly important that New Yorkers send a message to the world. We are behind Israel and we are against terrorism, period. There are wonderful things that could be accomplished if Yasser Arafat and the Palestinian leadership would once and for all renounce violence and terror. A SWAT team followed the politicians as they marched by a large pro-Palestinian protest. Israeli military occupation of the Palestinian people is the real terrorism that is happening here on a day-to-day -day basis. Every missile, every shell fired into Palestinian refugee camps is paid for by U.S. tax dollars. Mideast violence has decimated Israel's travel industry. Many signs at the parade urge people to show their support by visiting, 
Danielle Robinson did two weeks ago. Yes, they're very discouraged. They feel very abandoned, but we wanted them to know that they are not alone. Despite all the serious talk, plenty of people came out just to enjoy a fun event on a beautiful day. El Al Cruz danced in the street as a clown handed out balloons to children who one day may know peace in the Middle East. Tony Aiello, News Channel 4. Cuban pride was also on display today in the heart of Manhattan. The air was filled with Latin music and thousands of Cuban Americans filled 6th Avenue for the 19th annual Cuban Day Parade. There were colorful floats, lots of dancing, and our own Dr. Max Gomez served as an honorary Grand Marshal. With all the parades and a big bike race in town, this was no ordinary Sunday in the city. Security was beefed up and some streets and highways were closed and traffic was a mess for many. Jonathan Deanst reports. All the events, all the security spelled trouble for motorists. Major highways were at a crawl, while in Midtown, East 57th Street looked like this for much of the day. Traffic replaced by trucks packed with sand, hazmat and other police emergency units on standby. Many side streets shut down, a police chopper in the air. This police show of force just part of the security precautions being taken for today's Israel parade. Extra officers in place for this year's huge turnout. In addition to the Salute to Israel parade, the Cuban Day parade meant much of 6th Avenue was closed. For tourists staying at nearby hotels, it meant dragging their luggage through the crowd just to find an open street and a cab. You didn't have to go to Kennedy. We're walking now, what, three blocks because of the parade? Other events and neighborhood fairs had streets closed all over town. But most major tie-ups caused by today's huge bike-a-thon. From the Grand Central to the BQE, traffic was at a crawl for hours as several major highways were partially shut down to make way for the race across the city. While many fumed on some roads, other routes seemed clear as drivers took note and stayed away. Just flew over the 59th Street Bridge. Really? No yeah. traffic? Basically. None. After all the major events this day, police said there were no major crimes or incidents to report. Jonathan Deanst, News Channel 4. Tonight, a New York City bus driver is in stable condition after being knifed by a passenger. It happened this afternoon in Brownsville. Police say the suspect, Christopher Bartley, was upset because the bus wasn't going fast enough. That's when he stabbed the driver, Clinton Phillip, in the back. After a struggle, Philip recovered the knife and then was able to stab his attacker. Bartley jumped off the bus and hailed a cab to Brookdale Hospital, where he later died. Police Commissioner Ray Kelly is promising a thorough probe into whether a blue wall of silence surrounded the case of convicted NYPD officer Joseph Gray. Gray was found guilty of manslaughter Friday for running down Maria Herrera, who was eight months pregnant, her four-year-old son Andy, and sister Dilcia Pena. According to a published report, Gray offered to take a sobriety test after the accident, but fellow officers ignored his request. Mayor Bloomberg says the investigation could lead to disciplinary action. Not serving the public well, and we'll let uh, the courts and the uh, DA do the investigation and the police department do their investigation to see who actually said what. But nobody is above the law. Gray faces up to 15 years in jail when he's sentenced. Still ahead on News Channel 4, police need your help in identifying a woman found disoriented at a 7-Eleven. Plus, tense moments after a toddler falls down a deep hole in his backyard. And later, all the stars, all the shows. NBC so celebrates 75 years of entertainment. And in case you missed any of tonight's show, we will have all the highlights for you and a live report coming up. Request the things that make your room your room. Thank you very much. What's your request? Wyndham Hotels and Resorts. Join Wyndham by request, and as a member, get double airline miles for every stay. Call or log on. Honey, the Drakes can't go. Honey, now the Moors want to go. Honey, the Moors can't find a sitter. It's the Stewarts. Introducing the available third row seat in the all new 2002 Ford Explorer. More room for passengers or cargo. It's your call. And now check out the great deals on the best selling SUV on the planet Ford Explorer 4x4. Honey. 
She's all about color. Composition. Detail. With black and white in the balance, it's the shape of things to come. The newest capris and skirts. The white shirt. All perfectly priced. The possibilities are yours to give. The perfect gift is at Macy's. Monday at 5 on Today in New York. We're backstage on Broadway, live from Times Square. We'll meet the big name stars of some of the hottest new shows. Plus live performances and a preview of the Tony nominations. I'm Jane Hanson. I'm Maurice Dubois, 5 to 7, Monday morning. Tonight, police in Suffolk County are appealing for help in identifying a disoriented woman found in Babylon. Police say the woman only identified herself as Helen. She was found on Friday at the 7-Eleven on Route 109. She is in her 60s, about 5'5", five 160 pounds, with gray hair and blue eyes. She was wearing a blue sweater, a black and white striped shirt, black pants, and white sneakers. If you have any information, you're asked to call police. In California, a daring rescue of a 17-month-old child who fell into his 10-foot hole in his backyard. It's captured on videotape. Take a look. The toddler was playing when he fell in the hole. The hole was part of a construction project. Rescue workers lowered a firefighter head first who was able to retrieve the toddler. The child was uninjured but went to the hospital for observation. Two more mailbox bombs have been found in rural Nebraska tonight. That is a total of 16 pipe bombs found in three states over the last few days. The two new bombs did not explode, and postal officials said mail delivery will resume on Monday. The head of the Boston Archdiocese says he wants to reach an equitable solution for those who've been victims of sex abuse by a defrocked priest. Bernard Cardinal Law spoke today during Mass at the Cathedral of the Holy Cross. Two days ago, the Archdiocese withdrew from a settlement with 86 alleged victims. Law said the growing list of victims caused concern about the church's resources. Certainly, we must respond as best we can to all those who have suffered abuse by clergy. It is also true that the financial resources of the archdiocese are limited. The law says in recent weeks the number of additional sexual abuse claims against priests and the archdiocese has grown from 30 to 150. And today, for the first time at his Sunday Mass at St. Patrick's Cathedral, Edward Cardinal Egan spoke about the church's policy regarding the abuse of children by members of the clergy. He urged anyone with knowledge of abuse of children to go directly to the police and report what they know. He said that officials of the Archdiocese of New York have been directed to do the same. He can also said that any priest who is accused of sex abuse should step aside from his ministry until the matter is clarified. Today, Mexicans celebrated the Festival of Cinco de Mayo, or 5th of May. It marks the day in 1862 when the small Mexican army defeated powerful French troops who had threatened Mexico's independence. More than 100,000 people filled Flushing Meadows Park today to celebrate. The sights and sounds of Mexican tradition were on full display today at Flushing Meadows Corona Park, where more than 100,000 people lined the lawns celebrating a symbolic Mexican war victory over the French, a battle that took place on May 5th, 140 years ago. We proved that uh, the small army defeated uh, the really, really well organized army. And the, the most of this Mexican army came from the Indians in the mountains. So they, they didn't have the, the, the training and uh, what the French had. The triumph at the Battle of Puebla continues to be a source of Mexican pride, and it extends beyond Mexico's borders. Here in New York, the festival is growing in leaps and bounds in step with the size of the local Mexican community. As you know, the Mexican community is growing in rows in, the, in New York City. They're it's to believe there is over 200,000 Mexicans here. The huge crowds enjoyed folkloric dancers and mariachi bands. In addition to the great music and food, it was a beautiful day to be out in the park as families passed on their Mexican traditions to their children. Now, unfortunately, the day was not without some trouble. Police say tonight that there were several arrests at the festival for sexual assault and weapons possession. 
French President Jacques Chirac has been re-elected in a landslide victory. Chirac won 82 percent of the vote compared to 18 percent of the vote for extreme right-wing candidate Jean-Marie Le Pen. Voter turnout was estimated at about 80 percent. They say many came to the polls just to block Le Pen. Still ahead, celebrating 75 years of NBC history. The best moments from tonight's big event coming up. And later, a T-ball battle at the White House. Little leaguers from New York and New Jersey play ball. Les Miserables. From the moment they first stormed the barricade, it's the one musical that has taken theater goers on the crusade of a lifetime. The Phantom of the Opera. From the moment he first stepped out of the shadows, it's the one musical that has held theater goers captive like no other. Broadway's best ever. Isn't it time you saw them both? is a marker, a stage of life defined in years and marked by passing seasons. Are you prepared for what can happen when you grow old? From financial matters to medical needs, the so-called golden years, Monday at 6. I would say today was darn near perfect. Oh, it was Wouldn't great. You? And John says more of that's on the way. John? That's right, Rob and Linda. Tomorrow, the last sunny day of the work week, and then increase in clouds and humidity as we go through time. But what a weekend. It was a winter, wasn't it? Outside right now, we're just dealing with clear skies, and it's mild out there. Although the winds are picking up out of the south, 59 degrees, and skies are clear for several hundred miles. The wind is out of the south. At 9 miles an hour, gusting up to 18, the humidity is at 69%. Barometric pressure high. 30-30 continues to rise. High pressure will continue to influence our weather the next couple of days. Our neighborhood weather network, Keyport, Monmouth County. Their central school at 54 degrees. They made it up to 72. Overnight low 45. Wind out of the southwest at 9 to 10 miles an hour. Our high today in Central Park, as Linda said, just pleasant. And made it up into the 70s today, 71. Overnight low 51 degrees, no precipitation. Palm levels are still a problem with the trees. They're high. The grass, weeds, ragweed, non-existent mold is high. All courtesy of umd &J, New Jersey Medical School in Newark. Around the region right now, temperatures, well, they're cooling off slowly. 51 degrees Montauk, a little influence of the water. Water temperature in the lower 50s, so near the coastlines, they're in the lower to mid 50s. Elsewhere, we're in the lower to mid 50s to upper 50s over the urbanized areas. High pressures in control, that means fair weather, clear skies up and down the eastern seaboard, but look at the stuff back to the west. We have a line of severe weather developing over portions of the mid-Mississippi Valley, three uh, severe thunderstorm watch boxes and tornado watch boxes, but that will take several days to get here, so basically what you see is what you get, and the reason why, the jet stream, that river of air that guides our storms, well up in Canada, high pressure sets shop off the Gulf Coast, westerly breeze, warm conditions every now and then, We'll have showers and thunderstorms again tomorrow. The best day out of the bunch. Another spectacular day across the tri-state area. Mild readings, temperatures tomorrow away from the shore, getting up in the lower to mid-70s. A sea breeze by the beaches with temperatures only in the lower to mid-60s. Our forecast for tonight, we're calling for clearer skies, a temperature of 54. Tomorrow morning at 9 o'clock, you may want to do a little hooky. Sunny yeah. skies, 59. The rest of your forecast for tomorrow, we're calling for a mostly sunny, breezy day beautiful at 72 degrees. Again, tomorrow the best day out of the next several. The five-day forecast shows you that Tuesday will call for mostly cloudy skies, scattered showers and thunderstorms. We get enough sun up to 80. Wednesday, partly sunny, 77. Thursday, partly cloudy, thunderstorms, 81. Friday, behind a cold front, a little cooler, 70 under partly sunny skies. So all in all, 
tomorrow, the best day out of the next four. We are very pleased. We are. Thank you, John. Okay. Thanks, John. Now, for 75 years, NBC has been bringing all kinds of entertainment into America's living rooms. Well, tonight, a huge 75th anniversary party just a couple of floors above us. And right now, Michelle Franzen is outside NBC Studios here in Rockefeller Center with more. Good evening, Michelle. Hi, Linda. Hi. The stars are trickling out here at the after party, getting ready to continue the celebration of 75 years. Many have traded Hollywood for New York City tonight, remembering days gone by with NBC, and they came back here, where it all began 75 years ago, Rockefeller Center. The red carpet might as well have been memory lane. As stars from NBC's past and present strolled and shared their memories. To watch Jack Parr's Friday night show. And as a little girl, I used to watch the Today Show. I loved LA Law, I loved ER when I could stay up late enough to watch it. The brightest and best came out to celebrate NBC's milestone, 75 years of broadcasting. Yeah, TV was a big part of our lives growing up. My brothers and I just, like, used to just constantly watch television, and we watched way too much. I've never read a book. From the golden age of television to the golden girls, Betty White remembers NBC from the start. I started in 1954 with them and then uh, had the privilege of doing Golden Girls. NBC's present day stars couldn't help but turn into fans on the walkway. I just, I can't wait to get in there and to meet my, my heroes. Jerry Seinfeld kicked off the TV celebration, taking a look back at the magic of television. Cheers and Frasier favorite Kelsey Grammer tackled tough trivia, including how the peacock became the network's lasting symbol. NBC made the peacock their logo in 1956 when they started broadcasting in color. The most touching moment, though, was when Mr. Show of Shows, Sid Caesar, took center stage to a standing ovation. From laughs to news, NBC has kept the stars and the fans coming back for more. And again, the stars are coming out for the after party here in Rockefeller Center. Many of the actors and actresses we talked to tonight say they're already looking forward to ushering in the next milestone. That is the century mark when NBC rolls out the red carpet once again. I'm Michelle Franzen, Linda and Rob, back to you. Great night. Thank you, Michelle. Well, still ahead, Spider-Man's marvelous weekend opening. And coming up in sports, the Nets try to shake off the emotions of their first round series against Indiana and draw first blood against the Hornets in game one of the Eastern Conference semifinals. And the story of a retired fighter fighter, firefighter starting a whole new career. Bruce Beck has your sports. The redesigned six-cylinder 2002 BMW 3 Series starting under $28,000. Once you drive one, you'll never go back. Except, of course, to do it again. Visit your authorized BMW center for a test drive. After Dad's stroke, he had to go into a nursing home. Well, it was okay. It was nearby. Yeah, but it wasn't like home. Yeah. After a couple of months, we could bring him here and take care of him. He likes it better here. Right, Dad? Food's better. Flexible benefits for ongoing care from Mutual of Omaha. Social life is not much. Helping families take care of one another for over 90 years. A constantly changing and powerful force in nature. Chevy's complete line of SUVs, with more models than anyone else, period. Like the 2002 Chevy Blazer, with more standard torque than the Jeep Liberty four-door sport. Lease a four-door 4x4 LS for as low as $299 a month. Call for important lease details. No matter where you go, there's a Chevy ready to tackle just about anything. Blazer, as low as $299 a month. See your local Chevy dealer.
Spider-Man weaved its way into the record books, becoming the first movie ever to make more than $100 million in its first weekend. The movie caught $114 million in its...